So far we have seen how to create a pivot table according to some values to put in the rows, but we can put values in the columns as well. So let's create our pivot table again. In a new worksheet and let's consider for example on the rows the country field and we may want to split the values of the revenue according to both the country and name we can put for example the name in the columns as you can see we have canada that has been split into john and mary because we have put column in the columns side the name column. So we have uh, a double entry table because uh, we can uh, mix uh, rows and columns. So the revenue, the sum of the revenue created by John in Italy is this one. The sum of the revenue created by Mary in Canada is this one. The total sum of the revenue in Canada is uh, the grand total for the row. The total sum of the revenue for John is the grand total for the column of John. The, the grand total, which is the sum of the totals, is this one. The total sum of rows and columns. As you can see, if I select only these values, we get the total sum. So it is very useful because it gives us uh, an idea of uh, how to mix uh, several dimensions we can uh, see that uh, John has not uh, gained any revenue from Canada, for example, because this uh, is blank, or Mary has not gained any revenue from Germany. So this is very useful because it gives us a, a quick sight of uh, our dataset and how we can mix two dimensions with each other. My suggestion is not to use too many columns because the pivot table may become difficult to read and you may want to use a filter, for example, if you want to reduce the number of the columns or the rows. So this is the general idea we, we work with. You can use a filter here, for example, only for particular columns or for particular rows, for example, Germany. Pivot tables are very useful when you work with rows, columns, filters, and so on, because they allow us they allow us to explore a dataset in several ways. We can look at a dataset by different directions. We can look it from this country point of view or from the point of view of the name or from a mixed point of view. It is very useful to assess particular phenomena. For example, it is clear that John has, hasn't gained any revenue from Canada. And this is a very quick insight we can get from this table here. We have the total for the rows, the total for the columns, and of course the grand total, which is the sum of, the, of all, all the totals. We can use other measures, for example, the average, And we have the same result, the grand total and the subtotals for rows and columns. So it's very useful to, to use columns and rows together in a pivot table because it can give us a clearer idea of what happens inside our dataset and if there is some particular dependency or correlation according to two particular rows and an outcome. So it's pretty nice and it's pretty useful to use the columnar representation together with the row representation of some measures.